We'll start our module five on flood mapping. We'll start with a brief introduction to radar remote sensing, which is a different kind of remote sensing. Uh, so far, we've used Sentinel-2 data set. Some of you might have used Landsat or MODIS data sets. These are all optical sensors. They are sensors which are sensitive to certain range of wavelengths, which are in the visible spectrum or the infrared spectrum. And these are mostly visual sensors. That means it will show, you can kind of interpret it visually. Whatever you see in the image is what humans would typically see from the surface. Now we're going to learn about a different kind of remote sensing where in the electromagnetic spectrum, you have the spectrum of microwave radiation, which is this longer wavelength next to infrared. And we, you can use that and design sensors that are sensitive to those wavelengths and use them for detecting certain things. The two basic classes, active and passive. The passive microwave uh, sensors are sensors which basically look at the microwave radiation that are emitted by the surface. And uh, there are surface of the earth reflects very low levels of microwave radiation, and they are used to do all kinds of things. You can detect soil moisture. One of the most important applications of passive microwave sensors are that the Microwave radiation is proportional to the amount of soil moisture present in the soil. And you can use this to derive that. Since the radiation is very low, you need a very large area to collect enough information. So to just rely on a passive sensor, um, and you can use this data set such as SMAP, it's a one kilometer resolution. Because you need a very large area to collect enough radiation to be able to detect what's going on. So passive sensors are typically very low resolution, they're also used for detecting precipitation from clouds, et cetera. So useful in meteorology, useful in agriculture for soil moisture. So these are just, they don't have any energy source on the satellites. They're just looking at the background radiation that's being emitted. What we're gonna to learn today or focus today is the active microwave sensors where you have certain instruments about the satellite which are emitting energy to the Earth's surface and measuring what comes back. And this is called active remote sensing. And the most common form of this is radar. Uh, a lot of you might have heard the term radar. It stands for radio detection in raging, which is using this microwave radiation to pulses of microwave radiation and uh, determining how that is reflected back from a target and using that to determine uh, the structure of the surface. Again, just a kind of aside, this is not the same kind of microwave radiation that's in your home microwave. The satellite does not cook you from space. This is in pulses. Uh, it's not a continuous radiation, it's just pulses. Again, very low levels and again, different kind of sensors that are not uh, any harmful to humans or anybody. Just, you know, different way of uh, uh, using remote sensing to not look at uh, what's on the surface, but the structure of the surface. If you want to detect something at high resolution, you need a very large antenna. So if you want to have detect uh, something with 10 meter resolution on surface, you need a sensor which is a few kilometers long. And that's not possible to have a certain large sensor up on space. So there's a technology that was developed called SAR, synthetic aperture radar. So instead of having a sensor or an antenna which is very long, you simulate an antenna of that size. So the way it is done is you have satellite, again, very small antenna, it captures one image, it keeps going and then looks at the same target from another direction. And by looking at the same target from two different angles, you can simulate a uh, antenna of that length. And that allows this SAR sensors to look at, uh, get very high resolution capture of the Earth with small antennas. And SAR data is not looking at what our human eyes are looking. They are looking at when the radar pulse is shot from the satellite, how much of the signal is coming back to the satellite. It's measuring what is reflected back. So when you look at the SAR image, you will see the pixel well is described as backscatter. So it's seeing how much of the signals came back and that's the only information you get. So you need to interpret that and correlate it with the what is on the ground. I've linked to some good tutorials that explain what the SAR sensors do and how they work. So I encourage you to look at that if you want to understand this. This is all of the high level uh, tutorials that helps you understand 
what is back status how does uh, sar work